All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, hello and welcome to Unify's webinar on converting Oracle Forms applications to uh, browser-based Java applications in Oracle ADF. This is your host, Matt Brunquell. And before we get started, I want to review a few housekeeping items. So for those of you new to Unify, we're a uh, publicly traded software company that's been in business for over 30 years. And we're known for being the first to deliver a relational database in the Unix environment. But since then, we've delivered development software products that run across different databases and platforms geared to building and modernizing business applications, and to the business application developer who places a premium on productivity over low-level coding. So today, our business has expanded beyond database and development products into modernization solutions, like the one you'll see in the demonstration today, as well as archiving and e-discovery. Now we encourage questions on the webinar, and the way uh, you do that is to use the Q&A button on your WebEx toolbar. It is the button with the question mark. Uh, there's also a chat button, but it makes it easier for Halid and I to look in one panel for the questions to make sure we address all of them. Now I mentioned Halid, and that's Halid Beg, and he'll be providing the demonstration portion today. Uh, Halid is our Director of Migration Services, and he's been involved in both Oracle Forms upgrades as well as Oracle Form conversions uh, to Java. And a long time ago, he actually programmed in Forms himself. So it's a, it's a great opportunity and a real treat to have someone with Halid's background and experience on Oracle Forms uh, who's worked on Java conversion projects demonstrating today. So with that, let's go ahead and review the agenda. So the objective for today's webinar is to provide you with the information on converting Oracle Forms applications to browser-based Java applications in Oracle ADF. Now we'll start with an introduction that includes an overview of CypherSoft, and we'll provide a brief overview of Oracle ADF. Now ADF is a very expansive topic, so we're going to focus on the user interface components since uh, today's webinar is about conversion to a browser-based application in ADF but we'll also look at the key considerations for the Java conversion in general. Now we'll follow this up with a demonstration so you can see how easy it is uh, to convert an Oracle Forms application into Java. And it'll use ADF components for the user interface layer. And then we'll follow this by a Q&A session. So CypherSoft uh, is part of Unify Corporation and has over 30 years of experience and database development tools and application modernization. And CypherSoft is a very established, very successful practice for modernizing Oracle Forms applications. Uh, we're a member of the Oracle Modernization Alliance, or OMA. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with OMA, um, it's an Oracle initiative to help customers modernize their applications and infrastructure. And CypherSoft has been a member for almost since the onset and has always been about modernizing the Oracle Forms and uh, is focused both on upgrades as well as conversions to Java. So talking about ADF, um, ADF stands for Application Development Framework, and it's Oracle's Java framework for building enterprise applications. And in order to support enterprise applications, it supports many different Java technologies and components. Um, ADF is included with the Oracle Application Server License. However, ADF can be purchased or licensed separately to be deployed on other application servers. Now, we don't have time to go into all the different Java technologies of ADF, but for today's webinar, we want to touch on ADF Faces, which is the user interface components. It's a, it's a set of UI components for building rich user interfaces in a browser or thin client. Now, the user interface or UI components have built-in properties much like the UI components in Oracle Forms. Now, I listed just a few component examples on this slide, but it's important to note that the number of components was significantly expanded in ADF 11G. So, uh, for those of you that haven't looked at uh, ADF 11G, just so you know, the number of components went from approximately about 100 in ADF 10G to about 150 in ADF 11G. And just as key, 
the built-in properties were expanded on some of these components as well. And the reason I, I mention all of this, it's very important when you're trying to recreate the rich functionality of a client server forms application in a thin client environment. Um, the other thing, and you'll see that on the last bullet on the slide, is ADF, ADF Faces is built on the open standard of Java Server Faces or JSF. So when you look at these ADF components, they're actually uh, JSF or Java Server Faces components, but Oracle's enhanced them with additional properties and things like that for building these uh, uh, rich user interface type of applications um, that you, you know, you're used to on the Oracle Form side. So enough about ADF for now, but a migrated, looking at the key considerations on a conversion project, a migrated application should be as intuitive for the original developers to maintain as it is for new developers who have no experience in the technologies used to write the original software. So practically speaking, this means your vendor of choice should provide a one-to-one -one conversion in the code as much as this is possible. And the impact on the end users of the application need to be considered as well. So reproducing all of the functionality of the application is not enough. It needs to behave similarly over in the new environment in order to avoid retraining on the application. And for applications with a large number of users, avoiding retraining can be a significant cost savings. But also what we found or our customers have found is that um, when you do this uh, like for like uh, conversion, they found they can use the same scripts for testing the functionality as they were using in the Oracle Forms application. And as a result, this, they find this approach much lower risk because you migrate the like for like first, you can use the same test scripts, um, it really helps uh, uh, shorten the testing time. And as opposed to if you had rewritten this from scratch, changed the look and feel and the navigation, then it becomes much more uh, difficult and tricky in terms of how, how do you test it to make sure it's achieved all of the same functionality. Now this graphic illustrates some of the keys to creating a path for the developers involved in a migration project when they are the original forms developers or Java developers. So in addition to producing clean Java code, keeping the file structure of the components and objects organized much as they were in, Oracle, in the Oracle Forms development environment provides a reference point both for the original Forms developers as well as the Java developers to follow. And in particular for Oracle Forms developers, this eases the learning curve into Java. Now, as shown in the previous slide, Oracle's forms knowledge is rewarded in this type of conversion. Keeping the terminology, object, and method names, and class hierarchy helps tremendously in reducing the learning curve for Oracle forms pro programmers and makes a transition to Java as smooth as possible. However, as you, can, as you look at this illustration and the, the text, what you'll see is that the generated application is 100% Java or a Java EE application and in the generated architecture the key concepts and fundamental principles of object-oriented programming can be identified. So you'll see well-known Java design patterns as well as classes, inheritance, interfaces, objects, packages, abstract classes. Uh, I mean I could go on and on for those that um, are used to object-oriented programming uh, in particular in Java, you know, the, the things like polymorphism, method overloading, Java data types, you, you see all of this in the converted application and, and this application can be maintained and extended in most Java IDEs. So this illustration shows just a few examples of that at the business logic layer, uh, but we can go into the architecture in more detail during the demo. And then we also have a white paper available on our architecture for the converted application. And just so you know, it is a, uh, uh, a model view controller um, architecture. Now with that, what we'll do is we'll go into the demonstration um, portion 
and uh, we'll show the um, the conversion of the of the application. Some key points to keep in mind during this demonstration is we're going to convert the Oracle Summit application. Uh, this is an Oracle application that they use. Some of you may be familiar with it, actually. They use it a lot in their training and for demo purposes. And it won't be as complex as some of your applications, but it will have a lot of the characteristics you would expect to see in your complex application. So it has a menu, it has libraries, it has business logic, you know, in addition to the forms presentation layer and canvases that you're used to seeing. Um, we are going to do a full conversion. So, uh, and what I mean by that is what you'll see for the converted app is the presentation layer, the business, op, uh, business logic layer, all, the complete application will be converted. But you can just convert portions if you want. In fact, in some of the projects that we do or our customers do when they license the tool is they'll do a full conversion, but then they may go back and reconvert just specific pieces. And uh, we can go into why that is if people are interested in that. Um, we are going to show a like-for-like -like conversion uh, with the presentation layer deployed in a browser um, in, you know, using the ADF components. And then what we'll do is we'll review some of the Java code of the converted business logic, as well as at the presentation layer level as well for the ADF. Now with that, what I'm going to do is um, turn this over to Halid for the demo portion. Uh, just give me a second and I'll um, make him the presenter. And I will also unmute him. Are you there, Halid? Can you hear me? I am. Ah, great. All right, and then I just turned over control. Oh, there, now I should have. It's passing it over to you right now. Hi everyone, um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are located. My name is Khalid. Uh, basic thing that I would be showing here for the demo would be um, conversion process, how the deployment work, and uh, how before and after uh, of the application would look, like uh, in, in, in presentation layer as well as on the Java side, PL SQL conversion to Java. You should all be able to see my uh, desktop that I would be using for the demo purposes. Uh, so, so this application that we will we will be converting to Java today is uh, called Summit application, that is provided by Oracle and Oracle uses this application for their training purposes in Oracle forms, and uh, uh, it, it contains three forms, uh, two libraries, and one menu. And uh, basically, uh, this is not an uh, like a, a, a complex application, but it's not even uh, either a, a, a easy application. It's like a, we we can cat categorize as an intermediate application that contains mostly all the components that uh, Oracle Form normally uses. Like for example, it has a stack canvases, a form calling another form. It has tree structure. It has master detail relationship. It is radio button and check boxes and uh, and table rows and all those things present in this application. I would quickly uh, go through Oracle Form application uh, just to show you like how this application looks and and, and 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 then we can go from there. So first form calls the another form and one form calls the third form, and that's uh, the three forms that we are converting uh, today. And uh, and we would be showing you all all the components and how the conversion looks before and after and all those things. So for conversion, basically, like conversion is uh, is uh, the setup of a conversion tool is as simple as extracting the zip file. So once you extract a zip file, the conversion tool will be set up for you. There would be separate folders that you have to configure, and for that. You, you you can see the documentation or you can get the training and all those things but let me start the conversion tool first so this is the main uh, uh, front end of the conversion tool it's, uh, there are not too many things on the conversion tool as as uh, you normally see in a software like uh, providing options and this and that uh, 
basically there are a few things that you have to uh, input as a, a, as a parameter and then uh, you would go from there. So first of all, um, I would go few of the uh, conversion tool processes like uh, the main process for conversion tool is what you want to convert. And uh, um, if you are converting libraries, which are your PLL uh, libraries, you can choose uh, uh, a database PL SQL library conversion uh, uh, process. If you want to convert menu, you can select the menu module, and then same is for form modules. And um, and last step would be is to convert the WAR file, which is the last like uh, which is saying Java EE module template generation. It will create the WAR file for you that you would be able to um, uh, um, deploy on any application server which uh, uh, which is Java EE compliant. The second uh, thing what you can provide is your package name. Like uh, you can have a, a, a com, or if you are in UK, for example, or some other part, you might not be using com. You can use UK. You can use AU for Australia or something like that. The next op option is company name, and the third option is uh, application name. And uh, and obviously the presentation layer. There are two types of presentation layer that we support. Uh, one is called the plugin, uh, which is your based on the uh, on your plugin processes, but uh, and the other is like um, the Java server faces, like which are Oracle ADF, Java service, JSF files. Last thing is your encoding, like uh, if you are uh, you are using a Chinese conversion or some other conversion, Hebrew or Arabic, you you can use the the correct encoding and it it will convert the uh, Java classes and produce the ADF files accordingly. Input directory is where all the modules will be present. Output where all the Java and ADF files would go. The last thing is your database connection. Data, database uh, connection is only required for reference purposes. Like in an Oracle form, what you can do is you can call Oracle database package or procedure or function. And then you uh, in, in, in procedure you can pass like uh, uh, parameters. And then for that purpose is what we do when we are converting into Java. We we have to find out what those parameters are like are they varchar two date or number or something like that and depending on those data type we create the proper Java data type for example init and string and and double and whatever that case may be we do not write anything on the database we only do our references check like for for example as I gave you an example. Or, or or we just uh, read uh, or whatever the, the data part types are there or argument pa uh, passed to the uh, the procedure or other things. So uh, what I'm going to do is a start conversion of the libraries because this submit application has two libraries. And since libraries do not have any presentation layer, you would not be able to select like is it an ADF or plugin. You can only select basically the libraries that you want to convert. So I'm going to uh, select both the ones and then move them to the right side for conversion purposes. That's basically like two libraries selected and then you, you, you moved it on the right side for conversion and output folder where the conversion will go. And this is your output folder right here. We have to make sure it is empty to start with. And then uh, we will do a convert process. Since it's a very small li uh, 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 library, like number of lines of code in these libraries are about maybe seven to eight hundred lines of code. We normally uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, estimate like uh, about uh, um, thousand lines of code. About uh, it would take about a minute to convert. So if you have ten thousand lines, it, it would take about like a five to six minute or less or or, or a little bit more. The next step after the conversion library, we would go and then convert the menus. Uh, so there is only one menu, so I would say convert the menu. And here you would see that the presentation layer option comes back. So what I'm going to do is select the menu, which is your end summit. The next step is to select what presentation layer you have to do. When conversion is running on the menus, it is doing two passes. The first pass is to extract all the PLSQL logic and then convert into Java classes. The second pass is to, uh, to check the menu of, uh, presentation, like the menu option, the main menu option, then, uh, uh, then the sub-menu options. And these are the presentation and convert into JSF files or JSPF files, basically, and then go from there.
So I'm going to select like a, a, a 11G as my uh, ADA faces option and press the conversion tool. And every time you would notice that we are running a conversion, there is a log file that appears at the end of the process. This log file is kept for every day. So for example, like uh, down the uh, down the road, like in two months' time, when you are doing conversion and all those things, if you want to go back and see what you have done like two months back, then you can go to that particular log file of that day and then open it into in in, in, an expo in, in any browser like Explorer or, or 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 Firefox, and you would be able to see all the logs for that particular day, where it will say what you converted and if, if there there were any warnings, there were any exceptions, or there were any errors or something like that. So these log files are kept for those purpose for for that purpose. The next step would be is to convert Oracle Forms modules. And again, I'm going to select all the three modules. One is called Customer Orders, Pick. Move them on the right side. Make sure we select the right presentation layer, and then press the Convert button. And there is one more thing in this conversion tool, or it can be a, a separate part, and I will talk about that um, in a minute. But this is a log file that I was checking that if it is all OK, and it converted fine. The, the one that I, 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 I would mention here, and maybe Matt will discuss it later a little bit more in detail, this analyzer, what analyzer does. Analyzer we have added in the, as a part of the conversion tool, or it can be um, uh, purchased or, 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 or licensed as a separate tool also. Analyzer actually runs on on your all on your modules like Oracle Form and menus and, and libraries, and it can give you some estimation and also like uh, uh, if there are any things that might not be able to convert, it will give all those reports there. For example, go to statement, Oracle Form PL SQL has a go to statement, but there is no one to one uh, migration to go to statement uh, uh, to Java. So, so what it will highlight those things, and it will say there are these forms that are, or these libraries or this code that contains the go-to statement, and uh, and then that has to be looked into either before the conversion or after the conversion. So, analyzer can do those things for you basically. So, once the conversion is done, uh, the last thing we would do is normally is to create the WAR file, and that's the WAR file we would deploy. And as I mentioned, like it can be deployed on any J Java EE compliant application server. And uh, uh, for this exercise, for this demo, we would be using Tomcat as our base uh, application server to to deploy here because it is it is a lightweight uh, application server sort of, and, uh, and 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 we use internally for our development as well as for other other things also. So here there are again like few options to choose. One is obviously like your ADF. What is the main form? In most of the application, th there is always a, a main form that uh, that uh, that drives the rest of the application. So in this case, the main form here is customers. That will call the order form, and order form calls the uh, last form, which is pick form. The last thing you can select is your compile Java option, and if you select this. And, and the converted code is all clean, then it will create the classes for you. And then you can take that WAR file and deploy, and it should be able to run. But if there are any compile errors, then mostly like you have to, you have to go back and then uh, compile the classes, uh, Java classes separately. So here, what I'm going to do is select the right options, and then uh, say generate. And it would be able to uh, create like this is the compilation process going on. If it compiles cleanly, then uh, then obviously we will get the right successful version. Once the compilation is done, you will see that uh, that it creates the WAR file right here. And then uh, what you can do as the next step. So first step is your conversion. You convert your modules. Uh, you create the WAR file. And then uh, once the first step is done, the next phase would be is to deploy the application. And deploying the application is as simple like uh, in different application server, it is a little, little bit different processes. And we have already tried on WebSphere, IBM, um, Oracle Middle, Fusionware, 
Oracle application server 10G and Tomcat and JBoss and other, other, other application servers. And there are different steps to deploy those things. So I'm going to take this uh, co war file, copy it, and there is a web apps under Tomcat. I'm going to remove the previous one. We don't need that one, though. I'm going to paste it right here. And for the deployment on Tomcat is as simple as starting the web, uh, oh, sorry, starting the server, like Tomcat server. So I'll leave it to, to start it, and you would see that it will extract and deploy the, uh, the application. The next step is to, to run the application once the deployment is done. I open a browser and then give the URL to run it. So again, it gives me the login screen as the first step. And login screen you normally get, um, uh, like you can bypass the login screen if you want to, if you provide the username password internally for the application and it will bypass as an Oracle form. Or you want, if in Oracle form you can also, like you, if you don't provide the username password, it will give you the login screen where you can log in with username, password and database which, which you want to connect to. The same thing is in here. So username is here is submit. The password is submit. I don't want to provide any database because it's only one database behind the scene at this time for this application. But you might have different databases like development and testing and, and, and production. So, so in that case, you have to provide the right database name here to connect uh, uh, to that database. So once you go, it will open the customer's form because that's the form we, we gave in, 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 in that uh, thing. When we were creating uh, the template war file, we created the we gave the customers form as the first uh, form, and it it appears like uh, as the first form. And this customer form will drive rest of the application by opening other other two forms like order and pick form. I'm going to open on the left side uh, Oracle form application, you so you can see like how it looks uh, uh, before and how it looks after the conversion. Like again, uh, as, as Matt was mentioning, there is a is a, um, uh, a like to like conversion. So whatever you have seen in Oracle form, it will be converted into uh, into ADF the same way. Uh, the only thing is the component would look a little bit different because we are using a, a ADF JSF component. So the tab would not be like the same rectangular tab. It might be a little bit like a, a, a Windows sort of a tab. Uh, but the rest of the functionality should work the same way as it was running in Oracle form. So it, it decreased the testing time. You don't have to write a new test script. You don't have to train your users with the new application that is converted into ADF. They can use the same test script. They, they can use the same function keys. They can use all those um, uh, uh, methods that they were using before for testing the application in the new converted application. And here, this tree structure is the master of this block on the top, and this top is the master of the block at the bottom. So if, if, if you change this one here, you will see that it changes this, and it changes right here also. The same is if you change here, there is a, like a, there is a trigger which, which, which says like that if, tree, if tree node has changed, then, then, then uh, uh, retrieve the master deteriorate relationship and, and, and display the records accordingly. So if you go in billing, for example, there is a list of value here. You can display this list of value here. The same is like uh, the d list of value can be displayed the same way as you can see in Oracle form. There is a find. There is other buttons that you can use as in Oracle form. Also, like the, the triggers are firing in the same sequence as they were firing in Oracle form. Like, for example, if I say uh, select by sales representative, then what it will do, it will fire a trigger which is called when list changes and it will change the order of, 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 of the tree structure. So if I go here back, you can see that it changes the same thing. Like if I select this one, it will show three, three records right here the same way. Selecting this one will change the bottom record, which is your detail of this master, and it goes like that. 
So I'm going to actually uh, open the next form, which is your order form. If I double click this one, it, it, it fires again a mouse double click triggers and it calls the order form passing the parameters properly. If I go back in here, I select this one and it opens like uh, th this way. So you can see the look and feel, the radio buttons, the check boxes, most of the components would be same as in Oracle form uh, the, 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 that, you were, the, that you were using before in Oracle form. You can use the same one in, uh, in ADF components. The same like there is a, there is a uh, stack canvas right here that you can see here, help, like the stack canvas here, like again, like uh, colors or, 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 or the font sizes and all those things can be con controlled through CSS file in ADF, which is called a skin file. In Oracle form, you used to have like templates or, or visual attributes or property classes. The same way you can use the CSS file to, to accomplish the same uh, that you were doing before. Image on, like dynamically, you can uh, image on and image off. You can use those ones. Like uh, th there is no image on this one, so there is nothing in here, but there is an image on this one, so it will show the image right here. And the last form that I would like to show here is the, the, the pick form that you can see uh, here, that you can, you can for example, move right on the, on the right side, this one, and then if you want to move all, you can press this button, or you can move this one back here. The same is uh, in this one. You can move this one. Why don't we go ahead and go into the uh, the code now, Halid? Yes, I'm just going there. So, so I'm going to exit this out. The next step uh, uh, after the conversion, obviously, we do deployment and running, and then I, I'm going to show it to you before and after code. So for that purpose, this is an Oracle form that is you are seeing on Oracle form builder and you can see like customer form and customer has triggers at the form level and blocks on the block level level and there are there might be triggers at the block level for example in this case and there are items in this the, uh, this block so so the same thing you can do in in, uh, in j developer i have already deployed this application also in j developer and what i I'm, I'm going to show you like here if you see here there is a com and there is a sports code. These two things are coming from the same place which I was showing you before, like right here, a package name. Like for example, if you go in form here, there is a com and a sports code and summit as an application. So summit will go as an application name. And this summit will, will, will carry all the forms. Like uh, we converted three forms, so the, all these three forms are right here. And then you can, you can have like libraries. Libraries will have their, those two libraries which we converted. And then uh, menus have like the main summit menu application. So if you go in customers, for example, the the hierarchy we have set is about the same as in Oracle form. Like Oracle form has has form level triggers, program units, and other objects like alerts and other things. And also the blocks, the same thing we have done in here. Like the form level triggers will all go in the the main file, which is called customer.java. And if you see right here on this side. You can see alerts right here, defined right uh, right as the alerts are defined in, in Oracle form. For example, if you go in delete alert, you can see like uh, it is saying delete alert and caution and button. So the same thing is defined right here. Like how, like there is a delete alert, it is a caution. There are two button, one is yes and no. The, the, the default button is dub button one. What is the text of the alert and alert name? The next thing we define in this file is all form level triggers. So if you notice that the name of the triggers are exactly the same as in Oracle form, except we have Java is those names, like we are using Java standard, that means we have taken underscore and dashes out, and then we are using those ones. So if I go, for example, like uh, right in this preform, there is only one line which is saying default value of this customer ID will be null. The same thing is here we are doing right here. If you see that this default value is, 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 is the same built-in name as Oracle form was using, except for that we have taken the underscore out. So naming convention is exactly what Oracle form used to. So, so someone who is moving from Oracle forms to Java would not have to learn too much uh, about what, or, or what these built-ins are and all those things.
but someone who is new in, in this application like a um, cipher soft composer and and never used oracle form before they they might have to learn these built-ins and then understand what these built-ins are and again that becomes the part of the training and documentation when window close uh, the same thing when new form instance is all right here so you can see that uh, this is uh, exactly the same way like the comments are carried over the same way all the comments if there are comments in oracle form they would be carried over here the same thing would be used and if you see under customer folder there are there are some more folders here and each represent the blocks so if you see like there is a control block there is a s customer block these are all representative here like uh, and under each block you will see items are are are, are defined so there are items and then at, and at this level again there is a file with the block name dot java that contains the block level triggers like on populate detail right here there is an on populate detail so what it whatever it is doing that that is done right here as a conversion so it is one to one conversion as was defined before in in the in, in the powerpoint presentation by Matt. so that's what we normally do so I think Matt, uh, we are open for a question unless they want to see something else also. Is there anything uh, you want to show anything from the presentation layer? Yes, yes, I can show that too also very quickly. Let's do that before we go into the questions. Although I see people are posting questions already, so okay, okay. So, so I'm going to quickly like uh, like again like when you deploy the application in uh, in J Developer uh, an ADF application, you should be able to. Um, uh, uh, set up in a way that uh, that you can do like uh, the changes like the like the um, the GUI changes like for example there is a canvas right here if you see the canvas here it has different functionalities so, so so if I go in here for example I have a shortage on on the space but I'll just try to manage it. So if you see, this is the, the block right here, which is called uh, customer uh, tab canvas, tree, it is a stack canvas, right, this one. So you, 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 should, you, you, you would be able to see all the properties as you would see like uh, uh, the same way in Oracle form. So it is, it is a J developer can provide you the functionality to change the canvases, add the fields and do whatever you want to do uh, 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 as you, you were doing in Oracle form before. Because uh, the, 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 the ADF files we are creating for presentation layer is J developer comp compliant files. So when, when you open any of the JSF compliant file, you would be able to see that canvas right there and then. Okay, I'm ready for questions if there are any. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll open it up for questions, and the way you do that is go ahead and um, post, uh, post a question with the, the question mark tab, and I'm going to go back to the Q&A tab here so I can, we can start going through these. Here we go. Hold on one second. Okay. Let me uh, let me enlarge this if I can, and we'll just start going through these. Okay, first question, um, Matt, will this uh, presentation be recorded? Because I would like to show my colleagues. Uh, the answer to that is yes. We are recording it and we will make the recording available. In fact, you can go to our website, usually within a day or two, one or two business days, we'll have it available as a recorded webinar. Um, also, I might be able to send it to you as a link um, via email. Just follow up with me. We'll, we'll provide contact information at the end. Um, or you can get in your, your, uh, your, rep your CypherSoft representative for your region will get in touch with you and we can make sure you get that. Okay, next question. Uh, testing was mentioned earlier. Does code generation include JUnit tests for starting further development immediately after migration?
Halid, did you do you want to comment on that, or you want me to? I think I, uh, if George is available, I'm going to ask him to comment on this one. J unit testing. Uh, I don't. George isn't on audio, so I'm not sure that he can even hear us. Um, if he can, we'll, we'll have him. We'll have him text us, and, and I'll, you know, we can respond on that. I guess what I'll say in general is that um, we don't provide uh, a specific testing functionality, if you will, or a testing tool. But that is the beauty of because this is Java, you can use whatever testing tools and processes that you use for your Java applications and incorporate that with this. Now there are some tags and things that we do put um, in the uh, in the code that makes it easier for testing when triggers fire and things like that. That does make it very easy um, to do to do testing. But I, I I couldn't go into the specifics on that. We may have to follow up with you if you want more information on that. And let, is there anything you want to add to that, Halid? Uh, I'm okay. And George just came in, so he can uh, provide some more information on that. Oh, great. Okay. So no, uh, the answer that you provided is correct. Basically, we convert the Oracle Forms application as one to one, so the user interface will be exactly the same. Uh, and as a result, you will be able to use your old uh, test cases that you had, and you can use uh, whatever you had uh, with a load runner or other uh, automated testing tools you will be able to run. Great. Yeah, and I do want to re – and by the way, just so you know, that was George Burlack, who is our Director of Product Development for the Composer CypherSoft solution here. Um, uh, as I had mentioned in the presentation, what we see a lot of customers do, at least from testing the, the business functionality and the user acceptance testing, is they, um, they end up using the same test scripts that, and processes that they use on the Oracle Forms apps. And they can do that because this is a like-for-like -like, uh, migration. Uh, next question, what about the Oracle reports? So. Um, this tool does not do automated conversion of the reports. Our customers do one of two things. Um, either, number one, they will continue to call the Oracle reports from the converted Java application, and that can be easily done. And then the second thing that we see them do is they have some other reporting solution that they want to go to, uh, that they've standardized on, or that they want to standardize on. So we've seen customers go to uh, Oracle's BI, the business intelligence. We've seen some go to Crystal. Uh, we've seen some go to Cognos and business objects. And uh, we have some that are looking at going to a, actually a Java uh, reporting solution like Jasper. But in that second option, when you go to another reporting solution, um, you end up having to rewrite the reports. There is no automated conversion of the reports out there. Um, we have seen, though, uh, some utilities out there that assist with um, rewriting the reports. For example, uh, Oracle has one for BI, uh, for taking Oracle reports to BI. We actually worked with a customer on a project with that. But what we found is that that utility um, although somewhat helpful, if your reports have any amount of business logic in them, they will have to be rewritten. Uh, there aren't any utilities that, that automate the conversion of the reports as like what you see with this solution for all the other parts of an Oracle Forms application. All right, uh, next question. I noticed you were using JDeveloper for your IDE. Does this support other Java IDEs? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, it'll support most Java IDEs because, it, you know, as you saw, the, I mean, these are they're Java files, um, and it's a Java EE application. We have customers who've used um, uh, Eclipse, uh, also uh, RAD, you know, the Rational Application Developer IDE, which is part of IBM now as well. And I think we've seen some other ones as well. We use JDeveloper internally, um, and when we do projects, we use uh, we use JDeveloper. Um, although we'll use JDeveloper, just so you know, we offer two options. One is we convert the the forms as a service for you, 
um, and, uh, and then deliver the, the converted um, application to you, including all of the source. Um, or you can license the tool, go through training, and do the conversion yourself. The reason I bring this up in relation to this question is we'll use JDeveloper internally when we do the conversion as a service, but we'll even do that and turn this over to a customer and they're using a different Java IDE for, you know, once they have it and are going to maintain it and extend it moving forward. Any other questions? Oh, here's one more. So how much does this, uh, does the automated conversion convert? Are there things it doesn't convert? Uh, the answer to that is yes. There are some things that it will not convert automatically. Uh, what, we, what we typically see in a project is that it's going to convert um, over 90% of the Oracle Forms uh, application. But um, there are things that it will flag for review um, that it won't convert automatically. And we actually, Halid had kind of touched on this. Um, we have something called the analyzer, which will run the form through, and it will actually flag um, any occurrences of commands that it won't convert automatically that need to be reviewed. And we do that actually as part of the um, conversion process, very early in the conversion process uh, before doing converting, so that you know what kind of effort will be involved um, outside of the automated migration. And uh, just some examples, and, and the reason why that is, is in some cases there are things that you shouldn't convert automatically, even if you could, because you want to review and make some decisions because you're moving typically from a client server uh, application and architecture to an end tier Java browser-based architecture. And so um, you want to make some decisions on some things, but also, um, there are some commands that we just don't convert automatically because um, there's, not, there's simply not a one-to-one -one correspondence in Java. You know, one example of that is um, go-to statements. You know, we, we found uh, uh, some Oracle Forms applications have made gratuitous use of go-tos. And, uh, you know, you have to kind of look and see how are those being used. And in some cases, they are used for error handling, for example. And then those would be handled over on the Java side. You know, you, you would take those and convert them into try-catch statements for error handling, just as, as one type of example. But there are some things like that. We actually have a white paper called The Completeness of the Conversion, which provides uh, the different types of examples of things that don't convert automatically or are flagged by the analyzer. What's nice with that analyzer process is that, you know, in some cases, it's going to flag things and you're like, okay, these are things that need to be handled after the automated conversion. But in some cases, it's things that you can do into your, in your Oracle Forms app prior to the conversion to deal with um, so that more, more of it gets automatically converted, you know, depending on what it is. And um, um, that's, that's something that, you know, we can go over. By the way, when we do the conversion as a service, uh, we include as part of the estimate, because we have that analyzer, um, any of the this stuff that's not automatic convert, uh, automatically converted, we would include as part of the conversion services handling that so you have a converted application that is ready to deploy for your user acceptance testing and into your production environment. All right, next question. Is there a standard cost for the conversion tool? Or if not, how is it calculated? Uh, so the answer to that is yes. If, as I mentioned, there's two options for um, uh, costing this out. One is where we perform it as a service. When we do it as a service, it's a fixed price um, project. And so we run it through the analyzer and we would provide you, here's your fixed price cost for us to do the conversion and here's what we deliver and all of that. And if, if you're interested, you know, we have a, a, um, a, a sample SOW statement of work that shows here's what all we do. Um, and in that case, it'll just depend on, um, you know, we run it through the analyzer and then we'll look at here's how much effort it will take for us to complete the conversion. 
and that will depend on the number of forms and libraries and the complexity of, of one of those. When you license it as a tool, so when you do the conversion, you can license the tool to do the conversion yourself, there's just a flat rate uh, per form to be converted. So let's say you have 100 forms. Here's the price per form for the tool, and regardless of how complex or easy each one of those are, and that's your price. Plus, um, you know, you would there's a, a, a four to five day training course as well. There's a price for that. But if you need pricing, we can get the specifics for you depending on your region, uh, just by getting you in touch with your uh, Unify CipherSoft representative. Next question. Which would be, oh boy, this might be English as a second language here. Does the effort, if I wanted another architecture? I think what the answer, the question is there is, um, if you, what you see with the converted application, obviously, you know, we're able to create a like-for-like -like, uh, with the conversion, and it's all standard Java, um, and it's a model view controller architecture. But if you have some of your own frameworks that you're using and things like that, um, you can do some integration of this in with those frameworks. It just depends on which frameworks and standards and what you're trying to do. Um, de depending on that, it can be very little effort or it can be a lot of effort, but it can be done because this is a Java application and a model view controller architecture. So. Uh, you know, the presentation layer has been separated from the business logic and, um, you know, from the data access or persistence layer. So uh, there are things you can do to integrate this in with your, your other standards and processes. Um, I will say this, at a persistence level layer, uh, sometimes we get questions about, well, can we integrate this in with Hibernate or Toplink? The short answer to that is technically, yes, that can be done, uh, but in terms of using a different persistence level framework, it would be a, a, a very big technical effort to do. And part of what you run into is that those other persistence layers don't have all of the capabilities um, or properties, if you will, for what an Oracle Forms application is expecting when it's grabbing objects from the database. Next question. Do we have to convert the form to TXT files first before we can convert the form FMB source file to ADF? You want to answer that, Halid? I've been answering all the questions so far. I should let you answer some of these. Uh, that's the requirement for one big reason that uh, the, uh, the, the pre-parser we are using for conversion it requires the text file to, to be read and then uh, convert into Java. The second reason is the uh, we don't want to go with the proprietary FMBs, which are Oracle binary files. There are a few APIs present to, to read uh, those FMBs, but those APIs are changing every time the new version or new release of Oracle form uh, is coming uh, in the market. So that's why we went with the text file, because text file would be created the same way. Uh, whichever version that might be. It, it, it can be like form version 4.5, 5, or 6, 9, 10G, 11G. The text files can, uh, are created exactly the same way, so we would be able to convert them one time rather than changing the conversion tool every time the new release comes in. Great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Do we have the option to evaluate the product and convert a handful of forms? maybe a 60- or 90-day demo version. Um, so we don't have a 60- or 90-day demo version, and the reason why is, you know, once you convert these forms, I mean, you, <laughs> when you have the tool and you convert the forms, you have all of the source code uh, and um, uh, the Java converted source code there. Plus, if, you, if you're not trained on the product, um, you know, you, you would probably spend a lot of the time kind of figuring it out a little bit without going through training. But we do have some options for you. It is very uh, expected and very typical to want to see some samples of, of how this would convert some of your code. So we, we do offer a, a couple different options there. 
One is a sample code conversion, what we call uh, an SCC, where if you provide us um, a form, we'll do a convert, we'll take a day, we'll spend one day to convert it for you at no charge, and then we'll review that, that uh, conversion with you via WebEx and then give you that uh, converted code to review on your own as well once we've you know, reviewed it with you and shown you how to navigate through it. And uh, if you give us a very complex form, we won't be able to get it completely running in one day. Um, but uh, if you, you know, we, so it just depends on what you're trying to do, what you want to see. If you're just wanting to review the converted code, doesn't matter what size you give us, we can convert it in a day and, uh, and review that code with you. You just wouldn't be able to see it up and running. If you uh, had a, a simple form, and by a simple form, I mean one that's less than 500 kilobytes in size. Actually, there's a very good chance we could get it up and running in that one day. But the bottom line is there, we'll, we'll spend one day at no charge converting one of your forms and review that, uh, the results of that with you. Now, if you really need to see your forms up and running, um, or some handful of forms up and running, uh, what I would recommend is the second option, which is a proof of concept. And what we would do is sit down with you and see what do you need to see running in the proof of concept. And then we would scope out the effort involved to get that up and running, or at least the portion of those forms up and running that you want to see. And uh, we would want to scope it out to something that was less than 10 business days to work on. And then we would charge accordingly for the number of days of, you know, we would spend on that proof of concept. So. Um, we have actual uh, checklists that explain each of those options in terms of what we deliver, what's needed, a checklist of what you would have to provide in order for us to do that. But that's something that we do very commonly in uh, all of these projects, whether you end up licensing the tool to do it yourself or end up um, contracting us as a fixed price project service. You know, that's all the questions we have, and we're actually at 9 o'clock, so I thought we'd go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Halid, Matt? George, and I, I'm sorry, yes? Uh, you can also explain, like, uh, the, the source code uh, uh, for the product itself, like uh, if on the purchase of license or whatever that we normally do. Um, what, we'll do that. We'll follow up with folks that have questions about the pricing and all of that. Okay, you know, okay. I, I think I mentioned it before, but... Whether you license the tool or you do this as a service, you do end up getting all of the source code of the converted application. So there's no dependency on us. Um, w once you have the converted application, uh, you know, there's, there's no dependency on us for libraries or anything like that. All of the source code is provided. Anything else, Halid, before I close it out? No, I'm okay. Thanks very much. All right. So, uh, Hali, George, and I want to thank you for uh, attending the webinar today. We hope you found it of value. Uh, we certainly appreciate your interest. And um, again, we'll have this available for you uh, in the recorded version within the next one or two business days on our website, which is uh, www.cyphersoftinc.com. And then, um, when you, when you exit the webinar, you'll get a little 30-second uh, survey screen. Uh, let us know what you thought. If you liked what you saw, is it what you expected? Um, if there are specific topics you'd like to see covered in our next webinar, we try and do these about every other month, let us know. Uh, we, we use those suggestions and input to drive these, these topics. The last webinar we did was in January. And um, there was a lot of interest in the ADF, so that's why we did this ADF one this month. So if there are specific things you'd like to do, let us know. And, or if you, you, know, you want to be contacted by a Unify CypherSoft representative. Thanks a lot and have a great day.